So for this one, I kind of glanced ahead because I was pretty sure I was going to need something from the data sheet for it. And every test has the same data sheet. You can also get to it by going to getting started and the printable documents in there. There's the data sheet for tests. This is in there. So instead of rewriting it, I'd probably just print it again. I might even be tempted to tape it onto my final copy or, or maybe I just plan on taping it to both. Um, so that is a chart that I would need. Same thing for some of the other chapters. So the first section here, it's ionic reactions and my learning objectives. Also, always pay attention to them. Um, when mixing two ionics, uh, predict um, if it will form precipitate, write a reaction to represent it, and then um, something involving ionic species, be able to write the ionic and then net ionics. So again, I'm going to go to that video summary because that's what all is in the video. Um, so there says a molecular equation, full equation, and then net ionic. And there's some words all in here. So um, I would probably, when I was taking notes, I'm sure you'd have the notes for this on your page. I would probably have an example reaction. So maybe what I would have is NaCl, and it probably would have been something in the video. Actually, I'm seeing one thing in the video right now. So in that picture, so AgNO3, plus C goes to CU in O3, 2, plus 2 AGCL. And that would have meant that on this side it was copper chloride. So that would have been in the video. So that's a good one. So if there's an example, maybe just write out the example. And just one example might be enough to remember it all. But in the video, this is what's called the molecular. So um, make sure to leave some space for that word molecular molecular and then there's the word ionic and then there's that word net so to me having one of all of these especially if it was my first time learning probably be really really helpful um and then it would have written it out with all of the different things split. And so I would have gone in and I would have done that and that and that. And then I would have circled this. And at this point, because I did copy over that solubility chart right here, I probably would have even like done that and then this and this. Like as my big sign that because it's here, this is not soluble and the rest of them if I was thinking maybe I wouldn't remember something else you know maybe I'd use a different color maybe I'd go over here with the NO3 and be like okay that is soluble and that's showing why that one splits and that one and then maybe I would grab a different one for the chlorine one here and um because the chlorine is also that same color, but it, it's not in the exception, so that's why that one's soluble. And then I would write in my little phases because there was such a big deal made about that in the video. And then I would have shown how that looks broken apart. And if I thought it was unlikely to remember that whole two business in front of the CL right there, I probably would have um, drawn an arrow just to remind myself that that's where that came from. Ag plus NO3 minus and then plus goes to Cu2 plus plus NO3 minus and again if I thought I was going to forget it and I think I'm about to I would have put a big 2 there Make my plus sign over there more plus 2 AgCl and then all I need is that one example for my net, and I can show myself crossing stuff out. Um, my NO3. Oh, I didn't put a two in front of this because I should have a two there and a two there. So you could also color code it that way too and show my NO3s are going away. So then my net is at 2Cl minus plus 2Ag plus plus goes to 2AgCl. And then I'd probably make my note right here and I'd be like, no, um, like doubles. 
So that needs to just be Cl plus Ag plus goes to um, AgCl. So I spent a lot of time on just this one, probably because it was a newer concept. Maybe I got confused about it. And then if you keep looking, there's a thing about spectator ions. And so I probably would also have chosen to color code my spectator ions just to make sure that I saw them. So the ones that I crossed out, those are my spectators. So I'd write out the word spectator. So there you go. Um, and then I've got, there's a lot of examples in here. There's examples about making water and gas. That's doing a double displacement. There's a lot of examples. Um, now, right around in here, this one, this one had a thing about when there are a few things that make H2CO3 is one of them that makes a gas. And so if I had thought I might forget this column, I might have circled that and I might have circled this and these ones. I guess it's on that side too, so I don't need it in that spot. But just like a note like, hey, be careful if you make H2CO3, um, H2SO3, and NH4OH. Then I've got ionic reactions. So I guess I've actually kind of um, already did this one. I double clicked on it. So oxidation reduction is my other one. So oxidation numbers. So I'm going to go again, there's my objective, identifying oxidation numbers. Charges help determine how a compound is balanced. The ions will have the same oxidation numbers if it's ionic. Solo ions and then neutral elements. So charges help with everything. So here's like a little list that I would have had probably from my notes after having finished that, is that like if it's just O2 alone, you know, I2, or O2 alone, it has no charge, so it has a zero oxidation number. Um, and then like for something ionic, like NaCl that has a positive and a negative, then the positive is the sodium's oxidation number, the negative is the chlorine's oxidation number. Um, if I had just I minus all by itself, you know, so it's an ion, then I would be, his oxidation number would be minus one. And so that's the first round of them. Um, now, there's some things when you have covalence that's different right in here, and there's an order of things. So right in here, and I should, probably should have titled this like oxidation numbers here. And uh, maybe I would have drawn like a chart. There's my periodic chart right there. And I might have like put this in order. So like these ones here get their oxidation number first, not the hydrogen, I shouldn't have included it to the hydrogen. Those ones get their oxidation number as their charge first. And then these ones, and then fluorine is right here. So he would get his third. And then hydrogen is here, he would get his fourth and then more electronegative after that. And so one element will have a negative oxidation and the other will have a positive. So I might have done some of these examples to show myself in here. So like N2O. So between the two of them, none of those are on this list here. So the more electronegative one is the oxygen because NOF, O is right here and N is more over. So O's, O is closer to the fluorine. So he gets his oxidation state first. The whole thing has to add up to being neutral. So this whole nitrogen needs to be X minus two is zero. So it's telling me that the nitrogen, both together, the oxidation state of those nitrogens is two. That's together. So each nitrogen 
is two, since there are two of them, has an oxidation state of number of one. So that's probably the weirdest example, and I probably would have, maybe I would have written it like that. And, the, and again, maybe I would have color coded it kind of like that. And I would say that this has to balance the other one. If I needed to write more examples of those ones down because the nitrogen chains a lot, changes a lot, I would have done that. Um, here's this video, explains how to solve for oxidation numbers in polyatomic ions. So if I wasn't sure about that, um, I might have just written out a polyatomic ion. Oops, that's supposed to be the polyatomic ion practice. Um, PO43 minus. So I would have probably done like two times negative four. So that's negative eight. And I would have just called this X. So that's X. And the whole thing has to equal minus three. And it's not minus, sorry, I said that in reverse. It's four times negative two. And again, that is the charge of oxygen. And then over here, that is that one. So when I do that, I'm going to um, bring the eight to the other side. So I'll have X equals three minus three plus eight, which gives me five. So there's some examples that'll show up in yours. Once I kind of have the oxidation numbers figured out, then I'm going to identify them using the reactions and I got to identify agents and reducing agents. So there's an example video right here. Oxidation, the electrons are on the right. So if I, and I have that example up there, so I'll just write that one down. So like chlorine plus two electrons goes to Cl, two Cl minuses. Then I would just call this right here a reduction. And I would just title it like that. And that's the E. And then this is the oxidation, the Na going to Na plus plus an electron. And then even though it's a reduction, I would label this as the oxidizing agent. And I would label this as the reducing agent because the agent has the opposite word. It's like the agent is what does the thing to the other. And if I wasn't sure, you know, I might write a few more examples down, but I don't want to write too much in here. And there's an activity series right there. So I may have also, I didn't include it in this list, but it would have been a good idea to have had an activity series list on there. Um, and since I don't have it, there's a how to, it's for single displacements only. And let me find one, like an example for myself right here. So it's AUCL plus FE. And so it's the solo one that we're trying to figure out the solo. If the solo one, if this is higher, the reaction will go. So somewhere on the chart, FE was higher than AU.